today we have, and as we all been talking about diabetes all this while, and diabetes is a disease which we all know is very common and prevalent all around, and we all have been seeing diabetes off and off. Rather, more or less every day, every physician sees some, some of the diabetes. The management of diabetes has been always a challenge. There's so many new OHCs, first we call oral hyperglycemia, have come in the moment of ours. But these OHCs have a very important who to give, what to give, and when to give. All this management is a patient centric. When we call diabetic management, it's patient centric. So, first is always the management of diabetes is your lifestyle modification management, then comes your medical management. Today we have uh, Sushil Chauhan. I mean, he doesn't need any introduction to any one of us. He is a legend of, in a very many fields. Diabetes, so it's the bread and butter. Hai. But this is a diabetes padaka. Hai. I think we have yet to see anybody else, how he and when he is diabetes. So I would like to request Sushi, if you are ready, to take over the mic and go ahead with the prayer. Thank you so much.
So you know what is the meaning of impaired glucose? Tolerance and impaired fasting. Impaired glucose tolerance would indicate a insulin resistance issue. Impaired fasting glucose on the other hand would indicate an elevated hepatic glucose output and that is hyperglucogonemia. So these are two different issues. One in six live births, 21 million affected by hyperglycemia in pregnancy and we have an eminent pediatrician who felicitated us Yes, today Dr. S.K. Sagan said 80% have, have mothers with gestational diabetes mellitus. Of these 21 million, 80% would have mothers with gestational diabetes mellitus. 1.2 million children and adoles adolescents below 20 years have type 1 diabetes. So 537 million people who have diabetes, only 1.2 million would have type 1 diabetes. So the basic burden of diabetes is type 2 diabetes. 3 in 4 people with diabetes live in low and middle income countries. That is the double value because diabetes medications are costly. If you want to put your patients on guideline directed medical therapy and if you look at cardiovascular outcomes, you are treating your patients with multiple agents. I think Till about 2007 we were not bothering, we were, we were only looking at blood sugars, fasting and PP and HbA1c. And then came the concept that it is not the end which justifies the means, but the means which justifies the end because the basic focus should be on reducing cardiovascular outcomes and achieving good outcomes. And therefore, 9% of the global health expenditure which is spent on diabetes. So 10% are diabetics and 10% is the total health burden, total health budget that accrues to the economy and that is about 966 billion US dollars. 6.7 million deaths can be attributed to diabetes and age. So I think that puts in perspective the problem of diabetes. It is really a huge challenge not only for India, but for the entire world. Okay, so where are we as, as compared to the world with increasing prevalence of diabetes? So where is the highest? So the highest is in North Africa, this is 87%, can you believe 87% North Africa, Middle East, and Afghanistan and part of the countries which ceded from Russia. We are not much behind. 68% increase in the prevalence in, our, in, 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 in India. And we are very, very close to this. Therefore, this 10% of the burden of the entire population which is there, it is going to become much worse in the next few years when the population doubles and when the diabetics will double and I think only handling diabetes will become the sole challenge. Forget about India-Pakistan border issue, forget about India-China border issue, forget about what is happening in North Africa in North, and in North Korea. This becomes a really huge challenge because the resources have to be diverted to save these people. Diabetes does not come alone. It never raised but it goes. Diabetes comes with strokes, it comes with retinopathy, it comes with massive young MIs, it comes with fatty liver, it comes with mesh, it comes with cirrhosis, it also comes with peripheral artery disease, it comes with gangrene, it comes with amputations, and it comes with very severe debilitating neuropathy. So it is not one disease, there are seven diseases. Alright? So we are not much behind and therefore the need to focus on diabetes, to treat our patients, to treat their relatives, to guide them, to counsel them and to pick up diabetes early. Even at the stage of impaired glucose tolerance, even at the stage of impaired fasting glucose. And therefore, our attention should be not only treating the full blown disease with complications, but prevent those complications 
with appropriate treatment modalities that are now available with us. So what are the symptoms of diabetes? This is very simple. Okay? We know that weight loss, blood vision, frequent urination, slow healing, increased thirst and excessive fatigue. What would weight loss indicate? If a type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes will always lose weight, you know that. If a type 2 diabetic loses weight, you must think in terms of insulin lag. Okay? He may be having insulin resistance, he may be having hyperinsulinemia, but this patient suffers from severe insulin lag. And therefore, the agents that you use will have to be different from those patients where, which you use in obese diabetes. Okay? If a patient has lost 20 kilograms in the last six months, there are certain agents you would like to keep away from, right? And some of those agents would include SCRT2 inhibitors, etc., etc. That is not the topic for today. We have to concentrate on EPP for this data. Next one. Right. You remember the famous optics? Different those famous optics? So, hyperglycemia can be attributed to multiple factors in a diabetic. And the basic factor is decreased insulin secretion from pancreas. Basic, gold standard that we were told in our MABS phase. The second is the increased glucagon secretion, hyperglucagonemia. So it is not only insulin lag, relative insulin lag, remember, but it is also <coughs> hyperglucagonemia. And what is hyperglucagonemia doing? Hyperglucagonemia is basically having action at the level of the liver. And what it is doing in the liver? It is causing glycogenolysis. It is causing glycogenolysis. And therefore, when you are not eating, let us say you take your dinner at 9 p.m., but you don't eat anything for the next 12 hours, what is keeping your life? Glucose is coming from the liver. And what is causing glucose release from the liver? Glucose. Okay? So, I let alpha cells and beta cells, you know, as I said in my introduction, which I sent to you in the flyer, they are neighbors in the pancreas, but they do not fight in the pancreas. They, they park their vehicles elsewhere, in the other, other side of their houses, and they fight in the liver. The liver is the place for duel between insulin and glucagon. The third is the liver. And what is happening in the liver? Basic thing that is happening in the liver is elevated hepatic glucose output, right? And the basic factor which is responsible for that is hyperglucogonemia. Therefore, hyperglucogonemia emerges as a very, very important risk factor. Now, intestines play a role and there is decreased incretin effect and we will talk about this incretin effect just in a bit, right? So, there is decreased incretin effect, then there are increased lipolysis because the insulin is required for lipogenesis. So, if there is a relative insulin lag, there is elevated lipolysis and that accounts for the elevated free fatty acids and hypertriglyceridemia, which is so pathognomic of type 2 diabetes, this epidemia. At the level of the kidneys, you know, that there is an upregulation of SCRT2 receptors in the proximal convoluted tubules and there is increased absorption of glucose and which is also causing and contributing to hyperglycemia. At the level of the muscles, there is a decreased glucose output, there is a decreased glucose uptake because of uh, uh, relative insulin lag. Insulin is required for glucose uptake finally and since we know that there is a decreased sensitivity of insulin receptors in type 2 diabetes and that is causing and, and, and contributing to hyperglycemia. At the level of the brain neurotransmitter dysfunction and a, a, a field which is there to be studied in great detail. There was a drug uh, 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 called bromocriptin which was launched uh, in this direction, failed miserably. I don't know whether it was uh, uh, of, of the office lag or positioning of the drug in the treatment or uh, ill understood mechanism which may, may, may be in the years to come be studied better. So these are the causes of hyperglycemia in type 2 diabetes and I would like you to focus 
on one mechanism which we are going to address here and that mechanism is hyperglucogonemia elevated glucagon levels and that is because it is working against the interest of insulin these are two counter regulatory hormones but they are not fighting in pancreas they are fighting in liver so incretin and incretin effect time to go back and understand what is incretin effect next one so we all know when we ingest food and when glucose is released from that food it goes and stimulates some of the cells in jejuna and ilia and these cells are principally the k cells and the l cells k cells and the l cells and then incretins are secreted and these incretins which are actually glp1 and glp glucagon like peptide gastric inhibitory peptide they go and act at the level of the pancreas they act both at the beta cells and the alpha cells they stimulate the beta cell and cause insulin release they stimulate the beta cells in a way that because if you release insulin too much then what will happen there will be hypoglycemia but the beauty of stimulation here is that these incretin they stimulate the insulin release in such a fashion that they counter regulate it by also inhibiting the alpha cells and therefore there is a down regulation of alpha cells there is a up regulation or stimulation of beta cells there is hyperinsulinemia but there is hypoglucemia okay so that is what the incretins are doing next one now this is a very very important slide and the basis of understanding the entire talk so please devote yourself to this slide this is what is happening in healthy adults okay the incretin effect the normal incretin effect so if you give let us say 100 gram of glucose to a normal person a healthy person and you give and then you measure the insulin levels in the blood and if you give isoglycemic ib glucose infusion means a glucose infusion which is equivalent to i'm just this is theoretical hypothetical 100 gram of glucose ib okay then what is the insulin secreted and it has been found that there is a huge gap if you ingest 100 gram of glucose orally the amount of insulin secreted is much more than if you give the same amount of glucose parenterally okay and there is a gap this gap is called the normal incretin effect okay so what does it mean that if you ingest glucose orally then it is doing something in the intestine releasing certain substances in the intestine which are stimulating the pancreas to our advantage and down regulating the uh, alpha cells but then what is happening in type 2 diabetes is it the same or is there a difference in the incretin effect of normal healthy individuals and type 2 diabetics now if you see even if you ingest the same amount of glucose orally just see where was the insulin secretion and in the normal healthy individuals and see it is blunted so the incretin effect is blunted in type 2 diabetes remember this in type 2 diabetics the incretin effect is blunted and the gap between ib and oral ingested glucose stimulating insulin secretion is is reduced so there is a decrease incretin effect there is a reduced incretin effect in type 2 diabetes understood yes, because this is the basis of the talk if you understand this then we can go ahead and build on this story next one <coughs> so what are dpp4 inhibitors now we are coming to the essence of the talk what are dpp4 inhibitors they are orally active small molecules 
the DPP for individuals, no less lift things. Okay? I said you ingest entities, they go to the IVF and the regional, and there are two types of cells, the K cells and the L cells. They go and stimulate these cells and two molecules are stimulated, secreted. These molecules are GLP-1 and GIP. They go to the pancreas. They knock at the door of the beta cells and secrete more insulin up regulation. They go and slap the alpha cells and they reduce the secretion of glucagon down regulation of alpha cells. The administration of DPP for inhibitors leads to a 2, 3, 4. But the problem is when these ingredients are secreted, there is an enzyme called DPP4 inhibitor. DPP4 enzyme. DPP4 enzyme. This DPP4 enzyme goes and strangulates the GLP1 and GLP1. It kills GLP1 and GLP1. Okay? So for any molecule to be effective, for any molecule or any drug to be effective, therapeutically effective, it has to inhibit GLP, uh, the DPP4 enzyme which inhibits GLP1 and GLP1. Okay? So, we have to eat food. We have to eat food. We have to eat food. We GLP1 and GLP1. In our system, we have DPP4 enzyme, which inhibits both of these things, we have to do our work. And they are able to uh, be present and effective only for a few uh, uh, seconds, you know. And therefore, if you inhibit these uh, DPP4 enzyme through DPP4 inhibitors, then it leads to a 2 to 3 fold elevation of endogenous GLP1 concentration. So, for any molecule to be effective, it has to raise the concentration of in uh, uh, of native GLP ones by two to three fold. These are orally active uh, DPP four, mind you. If you take an injectable form called the uh, GLP one analogs, like you know uh, we we had Bayeta and now we have Victoza. What do they do? They elevate the GLP one uh, uh, molecule not by two to three fold. They increase it to 10 fold and therefore they are more effective. Now, implementing into the treatment algorithms of type 2 diabetes in many national and international guidelines. Okay, when were they launched? I will we'll just go through that slide. They were actually launched in 2006. Dr. Tutsi is right. And the first one to be launched was Genovia or Cita Glipin. And almost at the same time, the Vilda uh, Glipin was launched, you know. Uh, uh, by Galvez in India and in, in the world and uh, there was not much to choose we will go through this and then in 2011-12 we had the launch of Lina Glipin uh, although it came much later but uh, the wonderful uh, advantages it had it has stood the test of time now for 11 years and now it is going to be off patented and Helka Bartolo has launched this molecule uh, uh, which we will be discussing next one so, DPP4 inhibitors, they increase active GLP-1 in a glucose dependent manner. This is very important to us. This is the second most important slide. Okay, if you have understood these two slides, the entire talk, the, 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 the crux has been taken. So, meat is ingested, goes to the stomach, and then there is active GLP-1, which is liberated from ileum and jejunum, and there is a uh, 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 it, it, it slows gastric emptying. Apart from that, it goes to the uh, uh, pancreas and does the job which I just explained. Now, these DPP4 uh, uh, molecules they get inhibited by DPP4 enzyme. And if you can give DPP4 inhibitors, they inhibit DPP4, and therefore these uh, molecules they get elevated and they go and work on the, on the pancreas. So, if you can stop this cycle of DPP4 becoming inactive GLP1, then you inhibit DPP4 enzyme and therefore we have more levels of active GLP1 to work on the pancreas and then we have uh, elevated uh, levels of insulin. Also, we have 
decreased levels of glucagon. Now what? How is it helping us? How is it helping us? If you have elevated levels of uh, insulin, it is going to help us in diabetes. What it will do? It will help the cause of glycogenesis in the liver. Also, it will help us in the elevated uptake of or increased uptake of glucose at the level of the muscles, liver, uh, the heart and the other organs including mainly at the level of liver glycogenesis. 75% of the action takes place at the level of the liver. How will decreased levels of glucagon help us? It will inhibit glycogenolysis. It will inhibit glycogenolysis. So whatever glycogenolysis is happening at the level of the liver, you know, then uh, uh, we, we have decreased hepatic glucose output. And what is the main source of impaired fasting glucose? Elevated fasting glucose? Glycogenolysis. Glycogenolysis. Elevated hepatic glucose output. Okay. So we are decreasing hepatic glucose output and therefore it helps us. So this action of GLP-1 at the level of the pancreas is of immense help to us in diabetes and we are taking advantage of that by inhibiting the DPP for enzyme which breaks down this molecule which is having such wonderful effects on GLP-1. So this is what I wanted you to understand. Stimulates glucose dependent insulin secretion. This molecule is the pancreas mein, beta cell se ka bhaiya aaj abhaar aaja kaam karna hai, ladai karni hai. Thik hai, bhoot saada glucose aagya hai, hume usko deposit karna hai. To bhai, aapne circulation se glucose ko liya, aur daakna shuru kar diya, liver ke andar, aur usko use karna shuru kar diya, muscles ke level pe, aur heart ne use karna shuru kar diya, aapne energy needs ke liye. Lekin ek problem hai, क्या प्रॉब्लम है भाई इंसुलिन इतना ज्यादा अगर आप निकालोगे तो पेशेंट को क्या होगा ही कैन गोइंग टू हाइपो ही कैन गोइंग टू हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया तो ये क्या करता है कि ग्लूकोस को सेंस करता है ग्लूकोस को सेंस करके देखता है कि भैया ग्लूकोस का लेवल इतना आ गया है 90 पे आ गया है तो भैया पैंक्रियास का बीटा सेल स्टिमुलेशन बंद so it is enhancing insulin secretion, it is stimulating glucose dependent insulin secretion. So it is seeing, sensing how much insulin is being released and what is the blood glucose, it's almost like a glucometer and the moment the glucose goes down below a certain level, this stimulation is, is inhibited. No more stimulation of beta cells and therefore this is probably the only molecule which secretes, which is a secret of all, but it does it in a glucose dependent fashion. Is do sulfonylurea do that? No. No, it is a one way process. Nikal gaya, nikal gaya. Kitna nikal gaya, koi problem nahi hai. Daba ke nikalo. Thik hai? Lekin, lekin glucose dependence stimulation nahi hai. This is a glucose dependent stimulation. Next one. So, uh, what are the drugs? Uh, Dr. Tulsi sir said, 2006, it was approved. Milda Clifton came very close. Said, I think in India, actually, they were lost almost together, if I remember it correctly. Orgliza came in 2009, then Rina Clifton came in 2011, Hello Clifton 2013, and Inelia Clifton was launched in uh, uh, Japan, but came soon to India. It has a favorable clinical efficacy, no risk of hypoglycemia, weight neutrality. Hello so, never came to India, sir. Hello is, is, is Aloza, sir. Aloza has been lost in India. Recently. Aloza has been lost in India, sir. Yes, sir. Aloza was lost in India, but uh, hasn't worked out very good for them. Uh, weight neutrality, rare chances of side effects, and backed by extensive scientific uh, studies. Evidence. Next one. What is the glucose loading efficacy? We all know. That these are agents we do, which uh, uh, do not uh, have great uh, glucose loading efficacy. But please understand, this is an HbA1c which is around 8. So if you reduce HbA1c to the tune of 0 0.74, 0 0.74, almost the same, 
at that HBA will see of uh, A that as we are already using combinations metformin, metformin has its own uh, uh, great advantages. But higher the baseline HBA will see, more is the HBA will see reduction. And you all know that we don't have to come to the clinic where we don't have to come to the clinic. पेशेंट्स तो आते हैं जिनका एच पी एवं सी होता है ग्यारह बारह अगर आप तेरह चौदह सर ने कहा बिल्कुल एग्री करता हूं तो अगर आप उतने एच पी एवं सी पे यूज करेंगे तो आपको जो एच पी एवं सी रिडक्शन मिलेगा वो भी बहुत अच्छा मिलेगा इफ यू आर यूजिंग एट ए बेस्ट एंड एच पी एवं सी ऑफ इलेवन मे बी यू गेट ए रिडक्शन ऑफ फोर और इवन थ्री एंड हाफ सो दिस इज अ वेरी गुड एजेंट टू यूज इन कॉम्बिनेशन विद मेटफॉर्म नेक्स्ट ओके सो या सो ग्लूकोज और अगले वाले बेटे व्हाट आर द साइड इफेक्ट्स गुड सेफ्टी एंड टॉलरेबिलिटी प्रोफाइल्स इन द फेज थ्री क्लिनिकल स्टडी प्रोग्राम मोस्ट फ्रीक्वेंट एडवर्स इवेंट्स आर नेजर फेरेटाइटिस एंड स्किन लेजर्स आई डोंट नो व्हेदर लरी सी इज नॉट अ डायबिटिक्स डू यू सी देन डू यू सी कॉपर हार्डली हार्डली ओके एंड स्किन लेजर्स आई हैड आई एंड आई मस्ट से आई आई मस्ट से दैट दिस इज फॉर Knowledge and for uh, information to all, it can cause bull bullous pancreatitis. And uh, Dr. Uh, Rupeshwar has had a series of patients who had this problem of bullous pancreatitis uh, uh, arising because of lactans, and all the lactans are capable of doing that. So, any any of your patients who has skin lesions, uh, uh, and uh, Dr. Lippi and me were treating a common patient uh, who had uh, skin lesions. They were not bullous. Ultimately, uh, uh, she went to Max and she had got a skin wrap. She done, but the uh, classical bullous pancreatitis was not found because it was negative for certain uh, you know markers which should be there. Anyway, but remember that these two side effects can occur: nasopharyngitis and pancreatitis. This class has demonstrated a good safety and tol uh, tolerability spectrum and justifies the wide use of the class. Next one. Right. Next Can one. I add here? Yes, sir. Sir, please. Arthralgia has a black box warning for the US FDA. If you have any patient who has new onset joint pains or arthralgia, please consider whether you have used lipid uh, pore inhibitors. So this is a black box warning. Thank you, sir. For the US FDA. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So, uh, simplifying treatment uh, of diabetes with renal lipid. Next one. It has got strong efficacy, CV, renal and hepatic safety, negligible hypoglycemia, no weight gain, and simple dosing. So, what is the efficacy of renal lipid across uh, combinations? Whether you are using monotherapy or uh, and kindly uh, have a look at the baseline HbA1c, right? So that is what I was talking about when we are talking about an HbA1c reduction of 0, 0 0.74. HbA1c is also A. So. आठ पे अगर आपने 0.75 घटा दिया, तो basically कितना बचा 7.2, ठीक है ना? तो उसके लिए बहुत करना है कि उसमें क्या करना है, वहाँ पे क्या करना है, right? And then this is metformin in eligible patients 0.60, Japanese study is probably more effective than the other other countries. Add on to metformin 0.6, add on to sulfonyl urea 0.47, why? भाई जो था इंसुलिन वो तो ऑलरेडी निकाल दिया ना सल्फोन एल्यूरिया ने क्या बचा उसके लिए बचाने के लिए काम करने के लिए तो बचा ही नहीं कुछ ठीक है सो विच सल्फोन एल्यूरिया इसलिए इफेक्टिविटी विल नॉट बी दैट मच एड ऑन टू बायोलिटा दो 0.5 एड ऑन टू डबल 0.6 एंड इवन इंसुलिन 0.6 सो अक्रॉस स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ डायबिटीज ट्रीटमेंट वेयरएवर यू हैड दिस मेडिकेशन इट इज गोइंग टू हैव वेरी गुड इफेक्ट्स ऑलराइट इन सर्टेन ग्रुप लिटिल लेस इन अदर ग्रुप्स बट इवन इन मोनोथेरेपी the effects are very good, 0 0.7 days. Next one. Okay, so uh, this is a study by uh, uh, Galvix and uh, it was published in Lancet, uh, I think in 2012, yes, in 2012. Please do not uh, 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 confuse it with the head-to-head -head comparison of uh, 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 lilac with uh, sulfonyl urea, the famous Carolina study. Uh, we will double that later. Adjusted change from baseline over time, linalipine metformin and glimifrite plus metformin. This is the combination. This is a head-to-head -head comparison. 
even at the end of uh, uh, 96 uh, weeks, you will see the effect of uh, linajeptin and metformin sustains and the HbA1c at the end of such a study is lower as compared to the gold standard uh, 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 formulation that we use of metformin and linajeptin. So the effect is not only immediate, you know, but it is also sustained. It is not as drastic as you know sulfonylurea are blessed with their unique efficacy uh, which occurs very very early in the treatment. But that treatment as the time goes by, it is, uh, uh, it is, it is uh, decreasing and therefore even at the end of 96 weeks, 100 weeks, 104 weeks, we still have better results with combination of DDP4 and metformin. Next one. Okay, so uh, uh, is the efficacy uh, changing according to the age? So it is uh, less than 50 years, 0 0.58. So Kamal ki baat hai ki more than 75 years, 0 0.78, and therefore Dr. Mangla sir uses in elderly people with gray and and here is the evidence that we have a very good efficacy of DDP4 inhibitors even in the elderly people to the tune of 0 0.8 percent. And not only good efficacy, also the great advantage of decreased hypoglycemia in elderly people. You know, we are always worried about their fall, especially in their bathrooms and socially fractures. Okay? So, this is the great advantage across age groups, this molecule is effective. Next one. Right. So, what about the weight neutral energy? So, we actually have to use it with the existing agents which have similar efficacy. And uh, we have glimipride as the gold standard agent and we know that uh, there is a problem with the uh, sulfonyl urea. There, uh, uh, there are increased chances of hypoglycemia and once your patient has hypoglycemia, he goes into defensive snacking. Always remember. Agar usko dobeh mein ek baje clinic mein vaitte hoye ya apne kaam karte hoye kisi doctor ko bhi agar ho gaya hypo ho gaya to wo 12:30 pe jo hai to khana shuru kar dega apni dukaan pe hoga kahin pe bhi hoga driving kar raha hoga theek hai and it leads to increased weight okay so defensive setting then leads to increase this is a vicious cycle and we need to get the patient out of it now but what happens if you are using linear lifting the net weight, if you see in, a, in, in your groups, using glimipride versus linagliptin is 2.7 kg. Actually, linagliptin is weight neutral. The only good thing is it's not causing hypoglycemia. And since there is no hypoglycemia, there is no defensive snake. And that is what is making the difference. If you ask me family, can we use it for weight reduction? No. It is not recommended for that. It is a Comparison between glimipride, which is gold standard molecule for you know uh, diabetes uh, uh, treatment, and uh, uh, DBP for linear lipin here. Next one. Right. So, it, is it efficacious in all stages of kidney function? That is very important. We know that it's not only the cardiovascular outcomes, also the renal outcomes, which are important for our diabetics. Whether it is major uh, adverse kidney events or other things, and therefore. It's important for me to know that my diabetic patient, if I put him on this molecule and he goes, you know, through stages of mild, moderate, severe renal dysfunction, finally on dialysis, do I have to be very careful, do I have to supervise the treatment meticulously, carefully? So with linear lifting, whether you have normal kidney function or you have CKD2 or you have CKD3A, 3B or you have CKD4 and 5, so, across this spectrum, you have a very good HPA1C reduction. So, whatever is the kidney function. So, kidney function is not having any effect on the uh, issue or, 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 or of using lena lipid in this group of patients. So, uh, whether you have normal kidney function, mild renal impairment, moderate renal impairment, and you can see the EGFRs here, moderate, severe, and even on patients, people who are requiring dialysis, you start using 5 mg and you continue to use 5 mg. The only molecule which uh, probably has been compared with it is Jamie Lipton, and you know that it was launched in India by Sanofi, 
with a brand name called Jemmy Glow, and then disappeared from the market in six months. They couldn't, uh, they couldn't, uh, I would say, uh, stand the competition with Lear Lipkin. So it is no longer available in India now, Jemmy Lipkin. And with Cedar Lipkin, the problem is that you can use 100 milligram, but the moment you get to uh, EGFR, which is less than 50, <coughs> so less than 50, remember, always use dose 50. Less than 50, use 50. Less than 25, use 25. Simplify. Okay, normal kidney function 100 milligram. Less than 50 ml per minute, use 50 milligram. Less than 25 ml per minute, use 25 milligram. So you need to keep monitoring the dose. Similarly, with sex and lipin, and you know that sex and lipin has gone out of use and out of favor after 73 because of increased chances of hospitalization mm -hmm. on account of heart failure. Wind up lipin, 50 mg BIV, but we do not have very, very limited studies and that is why the star. Alloglyptin, Dr. Tulsi has said, not available in India, was lost in India in 2019 November. And uh, uh, after that, uh, it is still available, it is still available, but it's not finding much favor with physicians. Next one. So, uh, coming to Lina's Lipin metabolism and excretion, important slide, only 18% is the uh, uh, inactive metabolite, 82% goes uh, uh, excreted in the feces unchanged. The, uh, uh, no, the tablet is 5 mg once daily and the absolute bioavailability is 30%. 70 to 80% is bound to plasma proteins. Excretion 85% of the orally administered dose is excreted via the bile and gut and through the feces. Only 5% of orally administered dose goes to the kidney. So, kidney taste care only of the 5% of renal lipid. Metabolism is a minor contributor to the overall disposition, elimination of renal lipid, which is mainly eliminated unchanged through feces. Remember, its main metabolite accounts for approximately 18% of the molar renal lipid plasma exposure after a single oral 10 mg dose. The trial dose 10 mg. We don't use 10 mg in day to day practice. Next one. What about renal lipid in hepatic impairment? In addition to renal dysfunction, patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus frequently show evidence of hepatic disease, including non alcoholic fatty liver disease and cirrhosis. The other day we had a talk on non alcoholic fatty liver disease, which I think Dr. Viveka was supposed to be taking. I I plunged into it and rash and etc. etc. And in even in patients who are having this, they can continue to use renal lipid because the, the most of the molecule is it becomes you know un, it goes unchanged. So it's not having any effect on the liver. Despite the largely hepatic route of elimination of renal lipid, the presence of hepatic impairment has been shown to have no clinically important effect on the pharmacokinetic pharmacodynamic or tolerability of the renal lipid. In a study of subjects with mild, moderate or severe hepatic impairment, exposure to single or multiple doses of renal lipid 5 mg was not shown to affect clinically relevant extent by the presence of hepatic impairment. So, you want to go to the previous slide? So, Lena Lipkin safety and efficacy across hepatic dysfunction. So, since it does not involve CYP 450 metabolism, therefore, we do not have to reduce the dose. In, in hepatic dysfunction and the same dose can be given. So we have the great advantage of using the same dose in renal dysfunction, also in hepatic dysfunction. The other molecule which could have been used similar way was sex and lipid, but has gone out of favor because of other reasons. Right? Next one, please. So these are the two trials on, on renal lipid which we need to talk and we need to understand only four or five slides and uh, we will conclude the session, but these two trials have to be mentioned. So, linazepin was studied in two large, set, uh, in, in large trials, one the Carmelina, other the Carolina. You know, Carolina was a head-to-head -head comparison trial between sulfonylurea and linazepin. Okay? So, this was the Carolina trial. And what was different between Carolina and Carmelina? Understand this. Carolina was 
patients with relatively early type 2 diabetes had increased cardiovascular risk. So we had patients who were early into the disease. Okay? And we had nearly six, more than 6,000 patients. And their HPAOC varied between 6.5 to 8.5 percent. And carbonyl trial, patients with established CV disease and or CKD. Okay? And this was again more than 6,000 patients. This included patients who were late into the disease. 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, Carolina, 2 years, 3 years, 4 years, 5 years. So we had a holistic trial between Carmelina and Carolina having patients who were early in the disease and late into the disease. Okay? And all these patients, Carmelina and Carolina, they constitute a comprehensive cardiovascular outcome program demonstrating the long-term safety profile of Nenagrit in a broad range of patients with type 2 diabetes. Also, it is pertinent to mention here, Carmelina was the first trial which had pre-advocated and pre-specified renal endpoints. Before that, no trial on any DPP4 inhibitor had pre-advocated, pre-specified renal endpoints. Alright? So, Carmelina and Carolina had a combination of patients who were early into type 2 diabetes and who were late into diabetes. So, we started the entire spectrum, the gamut of the disease with its complications. Next one. Right. So, Carmelin was a unique trial that assessed the long-term CV and kidney safety profile of renal lipid. As I said, it had, was the only trial which had pre-educated and pre-specified renal endpoints. More than 6,900 patients, renal lipid 5 mg per day, standard of care. And how many events? Dr. Tulsi sir, you had to have more than 611 CV events, okay, to have a meaningful primary endpoint, which was 3P maze. And what was the 3P maze? So it was trying to first occurrence of any of the following. CV death, including fatal stroke and fatal MI, non-fatal MI, excluding silent MI, and non-fatal stroke. Okay, so three things have happened. Either fatal stroke or fatal MI or non-fatal stroke or non-fatal MI. Okay, so this is the three things. Next one. Right. So, leader has been significantly delayed progression to albuminuria. Now, we have been told that it is safe for kidney. It is safe for kidney. Pass milligrams is shown here, pass milligrams is shown here. But what is the other thing? उसके अलावा भी क्या हुआ भाई माइक को सर आपके बाद ठीक आ रही है ओके यस ठीक है दो मिनट की रैगेट टॉप चलेगा ओके ठीक सो कार्मेलिना इट शोड अस दैट देयर वाज अ सिग्निफिकेंट इफेक्ट ऑन एल्बेमिनोरिया फर्स्ट अप्रेस तू Microalbuminuria, first appears to macroalbuminuria. It delayed the onset of albuminuria. And more importantly, patients who had microalbuminuria, it decreased microalbuminuria to a significant proportion. So, we will see that we will microalbuminuria. Ko kam जिन लोगों को सीवियर एल्बोमिनोरिया हो गया उनमें तो कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा कमाल की बात यह है कि जिन लोगों को मैक्रो एल्बोमिनोरिया था माइंड है ईडी हो गया जिन लोगों को मैक्रो एल्बोमिनोरिया था उन लोगों में ज्यादा इफेक्ट था दवाई का सिर्फ माइक्रो एल्बोमिनोरिया नहीं कम किया आप सोचोगे मैक्रो एल्बोमिनोरिया हो गया मरीज गया जिन लोगों को मैक्रोएल्बुमिनोरिया था, उनमें 85 परसेंट पेशेंट्स के अंदर डिक्रीज रिवर्सल होना शुरू हो गया, टुवर्ड्स माइक्रोएल्बुमिनोरिया। सो ये अफेक्टेड, आई आई विल नॉट गिव यू मोर डिटेल्स ऑफ दैट, बिकॉज़ इट डेन मेक टू मच सेंस इफ यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट इट वाज वेरी इफेक्टिव नंबर वन नंबर दो जिन लोगों को एल्बुमिनोरिया था उन लोगों को कम हुआ हुआ जिन लोगों को मैक्रो एल्बुमिनोरिया था उन लोगों को कम हुआ उन लोगों को कम हुआ 
more than 15 percent of the patients had more than 50 percent reduction in albuminuria, which was huge. Next one. Sir, किसी को zero percent हुआ sir? नहीं sir नहीं हुआ। किसी से नहीं होता zero percent sir। So what is the what are the conclusions from Carmelina? I need your attention please. We can have laughter later please. We are into serious discussion. Conclusions from Carmelina. In Carmelina, Lina Lipin demonstrated a long term serious safety profile in patients with type two diabetes, including those with CD and no kidney disease. Number one. Nina Lepin showed no increase in the risk of hospitalization for heart failure even in patients at high risk of heart failure. Please understand in Carmelina we had patients who were deep into type 2 diabetes. Pandra Pandra Sabke Lothe and you know in diabetes all these people are having a common soil for atherosclerotic disease and therefore they were at very high risk for all this and learning from Savo TV3, what happened with sexual lifting? It showed no increase in the risk of hospitalization for heart failure. Lena Lipin demonstrated a reassuring long term kidney safety profile. Whether it was microalbuminuria or it was macroalbuminuria or it was the time to first onset of albuminuria. Carmela thus provides unique clinical evidence for patients' population that is highly relevant to clinical practice. Next one, please. So, Carolina was a multinational randomized active comparator CBOT. And what was the comparator? In Carolina, Glimibride. With what? With Lena Glipting. And you had 6,000, more than 6,000 patients, 1 is to 1 randomization. Lena Glipting, 5 mg per day. And standard of care, whatever patients were taking. And Glimibride, 1 to 4 mg. More people were on the high doses. And standard of care. And again, we had to wait for 631 events. Last year, both slide rang us. Next one. So, Carolina demonstrated data for the long term CV and overall safety profile of Lina Glipin versus Glimipride. This was the first thing. Actually, people said it is a favorable trial for Glimipride because it was as safe as the comparator molecule Lina Glipin. Yes, but it was not coming without cost. It was coming, and I'll show you the next slide, with with lot of moderate to severe hypoglycemia and even people who were, uh, who needed to be hospitalized or out of uh, hypoglycemia. So this is the cost that you had to pay for glimibride, hypoglycemia, and this is the cost that you had to pay for account of weight gain, weight gain. And I showed you a slide, and the weight difference was three point. 7 2.7 2.7 2.7 2.7 and all of you are going to wait even Dr. Sanjana sir overall safety the overall safety profile of Lena Zipin in Carolina was consistent with previous data and no new safety signals were observed so basically kaam to dono ne woi kiya chai glimi pride news kiya chai Lena Zipin news kiya lekin nearly 3 to 4 times there were elevated chances of, of hypoglycemia. This is this is glimipride and this is lena glipting. So chances of any hypoglycemia, whether mild, moderate or severe, if it was 10% here, it was 37% here. Of moderate to severe, it, it, if it was 6.5%, it was 30%. Of severe hypoglycemia, nearly 40 50 times and hospitalization because of severe hypoglycemia none in the linear lifting group and there were people in the glimmy bright group so we were buying glucose control at a very very high cost at an exorbitant rate next one please okay so what are the conclusions from carmelina carmelina established a long-term cv and kidney safety profile agreed of linear lipid versus placebo and demonstrated no increased risk of hospitalization because of heart failure even in patients at high risk of heart failure Carolina the longest DPP for cardiovascular outcome trial or DPP for inhibitor to date reaffirmed the long term safety, safety profile of linear lipid compared with glimmy pride in patients with relatively early type 2 diabetes so it was a wonderful wonderfully constructed trial one with patients early in the disease Carolina then another 
with patients late into the disease, 12 to 15 years. Next one, please. So what are the conclusions from both of them now? Time to conclude. With similar overall levels of glucose control, Lena Clifton demonstrated a consistently lower incidence of hypoglycemic events and modestly lower body weight compared with Glenibride. No surprise. Okay? Carmelina and Carolina constitute a comprehensive CVOT program demonstrating the long-term CV safety profile of Lena in a broad range of patients with type 2 diabetes. Agree? You have early patients early into the disease, patients late into the disease, patients with established cardiovascular disease, atherosclerotic disease, and patients who are very, very uh, uh, vulnerable to heart failure. In all those patients, Lena Lipkin demonstrated its advantage and safety. Next one, Vijay. Right. So, uh, now DPP4, they are featuring in the international guidelines and are familiar to primary care physicians. You must be saying ADA, EASC guidelines, year after year, after 2006, 2007, ever since DPP4 have been launched. And you will see that in every algorithm of ADA and EASC, little hypoglycemia, weight neutrality, good safety profile including in the elderly, no timing or dosing issues. Khane se pehle khane ke baad, raat mein, jahaan yaad aai, wahaan, jahaan bhul jau, uske baad mein lo, thik hai na, jahaan jago, wahi se vena, easy compliance, OD dose for later lifting, dhin mein ek baad dhe hai. Okay, so this is the comparison of various DPP4 inhibitors and I am not going to waste your time on this except to say that our uh, drug Lena Clifton, you start with 5 litre, HbA1c reduction is good, half life is good, DPP4 sense selectivity is extremely good therefore less chances of side effects, renal excretion only 5% and that is why absolutely safe and unchanged excreted in fecal in feces 85%. Next one please. So Lena Clipping with other OADs in type 2 diabetes. Not, uh, last slide. Next one please. Okay. So you can see this. Red form it. Only, only two minutes please. Only two minutes. Last slide. David, just leave the discussion for a minute. Conserve beta cell function. Only animal data. We don't have any human data. No hypoglycemia, yes. Weight loss, no weight loss, but when compared to weight neutrality in fact, and we have understood the other things, rare side effects, and can be used across range of patients. Time to say thank you, I believe. Yes. Do we have something? Thank you, thank you. No lower adjustment, no lower adjustment, no mild, moderate, severe. Thank you, Dr. Johan. I think Dr. Johan deserves a round of applause. with the felicitation because we have uh, two very important felicitation left over from the earlier uh, talk. Uh, yes, we have uh, amongst us Dr. Uh, Sunil Kapoor who is my senior and who is, uh, as we all know, please come and come forward. Dr. Chauhan will do the felicitation. So, honor the, our friend Dr. Kapoor as he started today morning I think Dr. Chauhan's efforts in CME organization. So we, we, we thank him for this and he brought a very important one to us. Thank you. We also have a pioneer amongst us, uh, Dr. Rohu Gupta, along with his wife. I would uh, welcome them to on stage. And Dr. Chauhan not only will felicitate him, but also have a few words about him. It's a pleasure for me. Uh, I think the best person to introduce Dr. Arup Gupta is Dr. Arup Gupta himself. <laughs> yeah, it's a very lucky day for me. And I'm early, early to bed. And uh, I have a known CA. I have hardly kept it in mind. I start my day at 6 and finish my day at 6. I have been busy, quite busy in doing my practice. My, my son had come last time. So, he is a gynecologist from Amalazar. My daughter is also a gynecologist from Amalazar. My daughter-in-law is a cosmetologist. My wife is a doctor. You know, we are into IIA for last three years. 
ये सैटरडे न्यू नर्सिंग होम इन लखपत नगर फायदा नहीं था कि लेंटेस एंड आई एम वेरी ग्लैड ऑल कम एंड कम सर वो थैंक यू सर डॉक्टर वाक विल ऑन देम ऑफ बोथ थैंक यू With these words, I will hand over to moderator once again for uh, uh, please one question. Sir, 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 तुलसी यस डॉक्टर माथुर सर मैं पूछो हां हां गो आई कर डॉक्टर चौहान आई थिंक इधर एवरीबॉडी इज अगेन सी नीना क्लेटिंग इज वेरी गुड इन बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स इंटरेस्टिंग इफेक्ट माय क्वेश्चन इज बेरियाट्रिक सर्जरी इवन बिफोर द वेट वेट इज लॉस्ट दैट मेनी पेशेंट्स हैव रिकवर्ड फ्रॉम डायबिटीज सो इट इज ड्यू टू इंटरेस्टिंग इफेक्ट वी नो because uh, even patient is being discharged particularly after who and why gastric bypass surgery and patients are relieved of diabetes no change in weight so it is due to intrinsic effect after surgery is it right uh, sir there is no doubt that uh, intrinsic is playing uh, a big role in that and you said that diabetes is diabetes sir it is being reduced and silent free sir diabetes is being reduced Diabetes situation is getting better. The patient is never cured of diabetes. No, no. Uh, therefore, 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 the uh, uh, the British Bariatric Society in 2010-12 they said they gave clear guidelines. We do not recommend bariatric surgery as a means to cure diabetes. That is not an indication. Which, which you know, people had started saying that we are going to do bariatric surgery, but we have diabetes, so it won't be good. So that is not true. That is not true. It does help in control of diabetes. Many people, in a way, how how does it help? Many people who are taking insulin. Yeah, the quality man. The doctor Sharma sir. Excuse me. Doctor Sharma sir. Sir, bad day sir. Please, please bad day. Will question answer session is going? Give us, give us ten minutes, sir. Only. Will ten thirty five minutes, sir. You can start talking. We just talk. So, sir, uh, how does it help? If a patient was on insulin, he will be controlled on oral medication. If he was on four oral medications, maybe he requires only two. If he was on two medications, maybe he requires only one. If he was on one medication, maybe for a very long time he does not require anything. But diabetes will eventually come back. Sir, it is a beast which follows you. It will not leave you. It doesn't go away. So diabetes may ameliorate. It does not get cured. Have an answer. Absolutely. So it, it, many studies have been done after doing my gastric bypass surgery, where there was increase in GLP-1 level by ten fold, and not in GLP level, because GLP-1 is secreted from distal jejunum and ileum, which is Uh, which is not bypass and GIP is secreted from proximal duodenum, which is bypass in blue and white cancer bypass. So, increase of GIP one after ten fold after surgery proves that increasing the effect is the cause of the duodenum. Sir, there is no confusion regarding the effect of increasing after bariatric surgery. But it is not a cure. It doesn't cure. I agree. Yes. It will come back, sir. It will come back. Maybe patient will get relief for four, five years, but eventually things will come back, sir. Sir, there is a clear, uh, Dr. Dr. Poda. There is no more effect of bariatric surgery. Your diet goes down drastically. Automatically, there will be reduction in the requirement of the OMG for insulin. So it is a definitely useful thing for a diabetic for. 
a great topic, Professor. Thank you, sir. And uh, I was reminded of the time when you first explained the integrating effect to us more than 10 years ago in Green Park. Yes, sir. That, uh, Parkland. <laughs> yeah. So, I have a specific question about this particular patient. Uh, I started him on linagliptin about four months ago. And before I started him, I got his mileage level checked. Just because in a random test, he had them high once upon a time. His mileage and lipids were normal. But I got them checked again about 10 days ago. And they are both a little above the normal range. A mileage is about 135 and lipids is about 190. He has no symptoms of pancreatitis. And his ultrasound done from a very reputed place is perfect. Do I have a reason to stop linagliptin or I should have a look at it? So, uh, I think it is a very, very good question, sir. And it comes to the uh, uh, most important question, do DPP for individuals cause pancreatitis? Yes. Now, please understand this, sir. Many times have been done, there has never been a correlation found between the usage of DPP for individuals and the uh, pancreatitis part. Although, although the uh, the gold standard advice is that if your patient has got documented pancreatitis and he is a diabetic, to avoid using DPP for inhibitors in that. Now, what is causing this rise? That is the most important question. So. There is a hypothesis which I am sure Dr. Tulsi will probably elaborate better because he is widely read. They say that there is an endocrine stimulation by DPP for inhibitors. We know they go and stimulate the alpha and the beta cells. That's how they work. They, that's how they work. That is their basic field pattern uh, uh, working. There is a thought sir, that they are not only stimulating the endocrine system, they are also stimulating the endocrine function. Endocrine system, endocrine system also. Sir, uh, can, you, can you elaborate? Okay. Let me answer that question of Dr. Paul. So, pancreatitis, FDA and the EMA statement, the data does not support that this risk of pancreatitis is going to be for inhibitors. But, having said that, if you have a history of pancreatitis, please do not start this drug or stop this drug if there is pancreatitis. Having said that, friends, DP4 inhibitors are involved Probably they reduce the incidence of CA pancreas as well. Let me say that. And uh, before I say anything else, let me ask our learned audience, what is the full form of DPP4? Please, Dr. Kiran Kudar has the answer. Yes, keep a watch on it. Yes, they will go maybe uh, if a man is uh, 100 normal less for the lab, you might get 140, 150. That, that's fine, don't stop it. But suppose you get 800. Definitely. You are in good trouble, sir. Yes. yes. And also, you can also ask him how much he is taking. No, he doesn't take alcohol, he is a non alcoholic. Yes. 